Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Uh, now we are going to start the the cooler of the agonist. So starting with the just revision of some basic concept. So cholinergic receptor you know better they are stimulated by the acetylcholine. We have two types muscarinic receptor and the nicotine. In the nicotine we have further two subtype and M subtype which is associated with the skeletal muscle and the NN which is mostly neuron or ganglia. Okay and the muscarinic five subtype M1, M2, M3, M4 and M5. So these are subdivisions. So we are actually you we know already their mechanism of action sodium potassium channel uh, for the nicotine while they are g couple gq uh, for the m1 m3 m5 while m2 and m4 are gi couple so we are going to look at the uh, the cholinergic drugs pharmacology so the nicotinic agonist for the nicotinic receptor are uh, considered especially as the nicotine which is uh, you can say selective for the nicotine and while the the antagonist for the nicotine receptors are if they are uh, uh, ganglion so we call it the ganglionic blocker at an n subtype and the other are the neuromuscular blocker so we have two subtypes which we which is our next lecture so today we are associated with the agonist and the muscarinic agonist so which is selective is the m agonist or you can say muscarinic and the similarly uh, muscarinic blocker for the antagonist so so this is just simple. if you uh, if you look at the the pharmacology it's totally rely over the mechanism of action so just recall uh, this location so which we already covered in the intro so your whole pharmacology based on this so either if the agonist so they increase uh, these action and the antagonist they oppose this action okay so this is just a repetition no so if you recall uh, the uh, the parasympathetic and sympathetic so your first neuron is always the stimulant so if you give the agonist so they can stimulate all these site so where you can see acetylcholine can act okay so now and if you recall the uh, the mus uh, the blood vessel so uh, you know better uh, in the last lecture we had discussed so exogenous acetyl can cause the vasodilation endogenous which is uh, normally uh, so you can say uh, direct agonist can cause the vasodilation while the indirect agonist have no effect okay so this is this summary of last so acetylcholine synthesis this is important because your agoni uh, agonists are reliable there so you know better first choline enter then they um, bind with the acetylcholine from the acetylcholine which come into the storage and storage by decoderization release of acetylcholine and this can bind with the receptor and m2 give the feedback while the they are destroyed by the acetylcholine stress and choline can reuptake okay so this is the synthesis pathway so hemicholinium inhibit this so they antagonize here and vasomycholine antagonize here so we are going to botulinum toxin here so we are going to look at the the inter direct agonist so which is acetylcholine inhibitor and the while the direct agonist which directly stimulate the nicotinic and the uh, muscarinic receptor okay so our cholinergic agonist actual secretory started from now so direct agonist we directly stimulate and the direct nicotinic agonist okay and the indirect agonist so direct agonist which directly stimulate the muscarinic and the nicotinic receptor Direct nicotinic means they are directly stimulated the nicotine, so there is one only nicotine. Indirect, they do what? They actually increase the acetylcholine level by uh, by inhibiting the acetylcholine esters. So if this is inhibited, what will happen? Your acetylcholine level will increase in the synaptic level. So in this way, they are increasing the activity of you know, the parasympathetic. Okay. So direct agonists. So there are two types. Either they are choline esters or alkaloid. Choline, they are uh, just like a modification of your acetylcholine structure actually is the acetylcholine while the modification uh, methylcholine methyl, uh, meth uh, methanacol and the carbacol so they are just modification so these are choline ester so uh, just uh, modification of the acetylcholine and the alkaloid which is one is the natural pelocarpine uh, other is the muscarine so they are directly stimulate the these receptor muscarinic and the nicotine well the uh, one special which is not clinically used nicotine which stimulate the nicotine receptor okay in the indirect we have two types uh, the reversible and the irreversible reversible means they reversibly inhibit the this so if your acetylcholine level uh, mean if your uh, uh, mean after some time 
they can be go down if the uh, this inhibition can be decreased down so how uh, so uh, these are physiocytic mean suicidic mean mainly paradocytic mean neocytic mean androphonium uh, donepezil and the arabic mean so these all are the reversible in uh, inhibitor of the escapulin resistance two uh, clear, the example uh, for the irreversible one is the nerve gas and the insecticide uh, and the other is the uh, you know, which cause the organophosphate poisoning and the uh, echo thiophate so this is the uh, irreversible okay so we are just starting with the direct acetylcholine acetylcholine you know better their receptor both of course acetylcholine they stimulate through the parasympathetic so and they hydrolyze by the acetylcholine estrogen hydrolysis okay so they uh, this uh, you must need to uh, some are going to be uh, uh, you can say the metabolized by this some are resistant so you should be clear the regarding this step so they are um, three plus mean they are uh, dis uh, easily destroyed by the acetylcholine estrogen okay and the clinical use not clear why number one short tablet because they are hydrolyzed by the acetylcholine estrogen and they are multiple action because they stimulate all the receptor okay so these are receptor are going to be uh, stimulated so they, instead of the actual action they cause a lot of side effect so for the side effect there is a mnemonic so that is a dumb bells so two times d two times e and two times s so one d diarrhea by the m3 urination by the m3 meiosis of eye uh, pin, uh, pinpoint eyeball so by the m3 bronchoconstriction m3 and uh, the other b represent bradycardia uh, by the m2 heart activity so decrease the heart activity m is uh, mean vomiting so by the m1 receptor so cns and the excitation of the your muscle and the cns so by the nm and uh, the nicotinic so especially are associated here the muscle and the cns excitation of work so an M1 um, uh, for the CNS and the nicotine as well as a muscarine for the CNS. Okay, and the lacrimation by the M3, salvation and sweating by the M3. So mostly they are uh, salvation and sweating occur, but there is some exception, some sweat gland, especially in the palms and in the soles. So they are uh, under the control of alpha one receptor. So that's why uh, there is no sweating over the palms and the your uh, this uh, the soles of your feet. Okay. So these are uh, adverse effect. Uh, if uh, someone stimulate all the receptor, these uh, adverse effect can appear. So dumb bells. Okay. So we have two major issue. Number one, the short half life and the multiple action. So we uh, the uh, the pharmacologist had modified the drug. So to number one purpose to increase the uh, uh, half life by resisting the the acetylcholine esters. Number two they decrease the specificity i mean they make them more specific or selective for the muscarinic and, and decrease the uh, the sensitivity to, toward the uh, the nicotine so in this way they modified the drug so number one let's see this is this is methacholine here is bethacol uh, bethanacol and here is carbacol let's see what it changes appear in the carbacol but you can see in the acetylcholine here is h3c okay while they have changed with the this ester uh, nh2 okay and here in the bathroom they have changed same nh2 and the methy uh, methylation at the beta side okay so what is the importance of this so this uh, h2 and nh2 or you can say ester formation increase the resistance towards the uh, acetylcholine esters okay so so in these means you can say they are more bathacol uh, 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 and the carbacol they are more resistant towards the acetylcholine esters mean they are uh, longer half life uh, action duration of action will be increased and then what is the importance of this methyl this methyl actually decrease the nicotinic activity mean they are more sensitive toward the muscarine okay so these both so methacholine metho and the uh, the bethanacol so in this modification uh, they are uh, these drug can be uh, clinically used okay well, if you look at the alkaloid, they are totally different structure. So they are actually uh, similarity with the your uh, uh, muscarine and the nicotine. So in this way, they are used. So uh, semimelin, which is a synthetic al alkaloid, while the pelocarpine, which is a natural plant alkaloid. Okay. So their structure similarity with the muscarine and nicotine. In this way, they are clinically used. Okay. Let's start with the uh, the uh, we cover the choline ester. Number one, we have methacholine. So they are more sensitive toward the M receptor. Why? Because of 
CAT group, okay, on the beta side. And they are, uh, and because of this change in structure, make them somehow resistant toward the estrogen. Estrogen means they are uh, less sensitive toward the estrogen estrogen hydrolysis. Okay, clinical use we use for the bronchial airway hyperactivity uh, for the diagnosis purpose. Why? Well, um, you know better when uh, the the receptor uh, are stimulated muscular energy. They cause what bronchoconstriction. So in the normal person they cause bronchoconstriction. If some uh, a patient of asthma, if you given uh, the uh, methacholine, what will happen? Severe bronchoconstriction because they are too sensitive toward the the muscular energy. So this uh, this hyperactivity can differentiate you from the asthma. If uh, he has problem with the breathing problem started, mean it's a hundred percent asthma patient. Okay. So you give uh, the methacholine via inhalation. So asthmatic may respond with the intense bronchoconstriction while the other have some uh, bronchoconstriction but this is uh, they can uh, balance out okay carbacol so methylene is the only one use that is diagnosis carbacol they have for both m and m because they have no uh, methyl group okay well they are resistant toward the hydrolysis because of na2 group so clinical use for the glaucoma uh, topical use only okay so, because the meiotic agent meiosis, so they decrease the intraocular pressure by increasing the drainage of your uh, uh, drainage of aqueous humor. Okay. So, no side effect. Why? Just measure. Of course, no side effect because they are topical. You mean they have local effect on the glaucoma uh, for the glaucoma purpose for the eye. Okay. So, they are not uh, going into the blood and uh, affecting the other receptors. So, that's why there is no side effect associated with the carbacol. Methanacol. They are more specific toward the muscarine because of CA3 group and they are more resistant toward the uh, hydrolysis because of NA because they have both component. So if you clinical use, they are used for the post operative um, paralytic ileus. So for example, if uh, uh, for the after the uh, surgery of uh, the, the ileus, so after the surgery, someone has paralysis in the ileus part. So they have difficulty in the uh, movement of the bowel movement. So, so in this patient, you can give the bethanicol, but not for the obstructive ileus. If it's an obstruction, so if you give the bethanicol, it can cause severity and problem because there is an obstruction. But uh, if you give the bethanicol, because there is a stimulation problem. So if the, you give the stimulation, normally if the, because of the post-operative uh, operative condition, anesthesia like uh, um, uh, problem, so we can give bethanicol, which can resolve all this problem. Okay. And we can give for the diabetic uh, autonomic neuropathy, which have urinary retention uh, uh, for the urinary retention. So we can give because they uh, give the uh, major action on the bladder and GAT, they increase this activity. So in this way, can, they can help out. Okay. So if someone uh, has a diabetic autonomic neuropathy or the uh, post operative paralytic ileus, so you can use the bethanicol. So these uh, colonies are all over now come to what uh, they have reflex and tachycardia why because of the de vasodilation decrease in blood pressure they uh, uh, and the, this decrease in blood pressure sensed by the baroreceptor and baroreceptor uh, send uh, signal toward the your cns and in response to that your uh, heart rate activities goes up means reflex tachycardia is one of the side effect of the bethanol Okay, let's look at the pelocarpine and semimelin. You know better, pelocarpine is a natural alkali, but it's a short acting, while the semimelin is a synthetic alkali, but it's, uh, it's a long acting. Okay, the important thing is that the pelocarpine has uh, M1, M2, M3, all three receptors are going to be stimulated, but uh, and while the semimelin only uh, selective for the M3 receptor, there is important. So, and the, they are resistant toward the hydrolysis. Okay, because they have different structure uh, from the acidicoline. So clinical use, number one is glaucoma, especially acute angle collagen. So pelocarpine topically used mostly. So they decrease the intraocular pressure in the emergency surgery. If there is a, a severe condition, so the first drug, uh, drug of chance for the emergency situation in the glaucoma is the pelocarpine. Okay, because the rapid meiosis and the contraction of the ciliary muscle, so increase the drainage of the your uh, the aqueous humor. So Press, uh, press myopia or uh, you, you can say blood near vision. So 
टाइप ऑफ कार्पेंट टॉपिकल यूज है ओके सेम दे कंट्रैक्ट द सिटी मसल एंड एक्यूमुलेट फॉर द नियर विजन सो वेयर योर मस आई बाल बिकम मोर कन्वेक्स फॉर द नियर विजन सो दिस इज अपडेटेड इट माइट बी नॉट इन प्रेजेंट इन योर बुक बट इट्स अपडेट इन द 2021 ओके द अदर इज जीरो सिटोमिया व्हाट इज जीरो सिटोमिया ड्राइनेस ऑफ योर माउथ और योर द इनर ट्रैक ओके so after the uh, especially after the radiation treatment are in the sugren syndrome there is a dryness of uh, in the your mouth or you can say the uh, if it's a female in the vagina like thing so we give the orally uh, any of them so for the treatment but the pelocarpine is for short term usage but the ensimilin for the long term purpose okay so why this is important uh, to uh, understand the receptor because if it's m3 so it's a helpful and for the uh, their half life can help out uh, and for short term use and long term and the choice of drug for example if a patient uh, have the av block so you can use the semimelin why because no bradycardia because they have no effect on the heart they do not decrease the heart activity okay because heart is associated with the m2 receptor so they have no effect on the m2 and similarly no effect on, do not increase the ga secretion because they are associated with the m1 receptor if you recall here so acid secretion are associated with the m1 and the heart activity is associated with the m2 while they only affect this part in this way they are uh, you can say choice of drug in the especially the, in the av block patient or the peptic ulcer patient okay for the uh, hair growth topical use because they increase the uh, uh, they cause vasodilation which increase the blood flow toward the your uh, hair follicle in this way they cause the hair growth so this is the story of the direct agonist now we uh, if you because we have discussed the glaucoma i am not going to detail but uh, correlation usually what is problem increase intraocular pressure so our treatment is to decrease the intraocular there are two way either by decrease the formation of eosinophilia and either by increase the drainage of the eosinophilia so in this way we can metabolize so the for the uh, decrease the formation we have beta blocker adrenal agonist alpha 2 agonist carbenic anatase inhibitor so these are the uh, first line are the beta blocker so and the, these are the adrenal which is used with the beta blocker also so these are different drug but for the drainage purpose we use the cholinergic okay so cholinergic so pelocarpine and the uh, carbacol physiotherapy which is upcoming drug so they are used for the glaucoma and the prostaglandin these are also uh, used uh, additively so now come to the nicotine nicotine our the next receptor this uh, the receptor both nicotine and subtype n and m both okay so they are highly addictive substance they are not clinically used okay so peripheral vasodilation constriction tachycardia elevated blood pressure because of your uh, this nicotine side effect so clinically not recommend just for the knowledge purpose okay so nicotine uh, it uh, the primary alkaloid in the tobacco uh, tobacco products which stimulate uh, stimulant effect on the local cellulus in the brain and they cause the reward effect in the limbic system because of this uh, uh, this addiction problem so we can't use clinically okay now come to the indirect uh, one so that is the acetylene esterase inhibitor so at this so they inhibit this stage they increase the acetylene some are the reversible some are the irreversible so we are going to look at both of them okay so let's see so they are two sub type one uh, they uh, they are either reversible either irreversible reversible they, uh, they are um, they are divided according to their location some are the central some are the only in the peripheral action some have the both cnn in the central as well as the uh, peripheral so how this differentiation happen just look at the some structure differences either a tertiary main tertiary main and the quaternary tertiary main when the nitrogen is bind with the three carbon we call it tertiary main when the nitrogen is bind with the four carbon molecule uh, so uh, four carbon so we call it quaternary main what is importance tertiary amine can cross the blood brain barrier while the quaternary amine unable to cross the blood brain so the drug which are tertiary amine in nature so they can cross the blood brain barrier so they have the cns effect so they can enter into uh, they have central action while the quaternary amine they are limited toward the peripheral okay so central so that's why it's a tertiary 
uh, which is uh, donipezel and uh, rivacetic mean so these both are the tertiary amine in the quaternary we are periodocetic mean neocetic mean hydrofonium so these are quaternary while the uh, the physiocytic mean they have both uh, they are also a tertiary amine so they have effect on the peripheral as well as on the uh, in the central if you look at the irreversible we have nerve gases uh, with military use purpose so they uh, and the other is a ecothiopate so cause them, they cause organic phosphate poisoning and while well, the ecothiopate is a one of clinical rarely used for the glaucoma purpose so let's see the uh, the first two uh, the pre predocytic mean and the neocytic mean both are quaternary amine unable to cross the blood brain barrier predocytic mean inter uh, intermediate acting while well, the neocytic mean is short acting and the poor GI absorption okay so if you look at the inter so their half life is three to six hour while the new segment half life is one to uh, two hour and the other is a poor GI absorption because of that we most of the time prefer the pre mean or the new mean okay so clinical use postoperative illness paralysis during the retention we use new mean same mechanism stimulate the bladder and the GI movement okay mesthenia gravis what is mesthenia gravis it's an autoimmune disorder we are which uh, associated with the uh, destruction of your their uh, receptor so uh, cholinergic receptor so that's why they have a um, problem in the flaccid paralysis type so they have process something like this so you can see here so here we treat a uh, user per, uh, periodic mean preferably over the neocytic mean okay tuberculin so these are actually antagonists so for their toxicity so for antidote purpose we use the neocytic mean so the reversal of the non depolarizing neuromuscular blocker okay so please in the if you look at the side effect so they have of course a cholinergic receptor side effect if they are present for longer period so dumbbells you can think of uh, most of uh, some of the side effect can be appear so for the treatment we give the uh, the antagonist that is the atropine okay the other drug atrophonium they no threat uh, therapeutic usage because of very short half life they have only 5 to 15 but there is one diagnosis used that is differentiation um, diagnosis messenia gravis versus cholinergic crisis let's see this is the problem in the autoimmune disorder okay so when you give the adrophonium so they increase the acetylcholine level so which replace the those ento, uh, anti uh, antibodies which has inhibited the your acetylcholine okay so by replace uh, replacement of those antibodies so you your uh, patient situation may be improved mean like if here is a tosis so they can open like this if this thing happen mean the you, uh, the problem is the mesthenius gravis but if the situation goes severity or worsen mean there is cholinergic crisis what is cholinergic crisis when the your uh, acetylcholine for example remain for longer period over the receptor they cause tolerance or desensitization so if you give further drug mean if you increase the further acetylcholine level what will happen this situation become more worsen okay so the basic difference we cannot use this drug because they have longer half life but for the diagnosis purpose which have uh, 5 to 15 minutes so we can use the atrophonium which can differentiate if the situation improve mean it's a messina grave if it's a become further problem uh, metric so then it's a cholinergic crisis okay so messenia gravis is what it's an autoimmune disease which uh, flaccid paralysis antibody formation against the neuromuscular receptor okay characterized by muscle weakness tosis and the easy muscle fatigability so for the diagnosis we use the adrophonium and for the treatment predisigmine and the neocytigmine which increase the acetamine. this is for the symptomatic treatment you can say somehow but for the proper treatment other drugs are also used like glucocorticoid which do what they decrease the antibodies formation okay and the immunosuppression like azathioprine, tectolimus or cyclosporin they decrease the antibodies formation so in this way they can help out for the proper treatment of myasthenic gravis these actually diagnosis for the symptomatic treatment proper uh, treatment for the long period okay so if you look at a cholinergic crisis where what is the problem receptor resensitization so paradoxically weakening with the anticholinergic uh, if you give this medication so they uh, cause a further problem okay so adrophonium test as i mentioned if the situation improve it's a messiness gravis if it's a worsen mean it's a cholinergic crisis so the basic difference in the if you look at the symptomatic messiness gravis 
they are acute while this is hyper acute more than the acute so here people is normal set is absent because uh, there no stimulation while this is because of hyper uh, activity for the longer period of your acetylcholine at the receptor site so people constricted setting increase bradycardia because the acetylcholine dec decrease heart activity setting increase people are pinpoint people so these are the symptoms uh, for the cholinergic crisis increased secretion so they worsen with the tensilon test or androphonium test while they improve with the tensilon test okay now come to the uh, we are three have uh, i think three has been covered so physiocytic mean which is a tertiary mean and which can cross a blood pressure but their uh, their half life is one to two hours so their clinical use is overdose of the atropine which is a left sciatic uh, condition because your all the receptor is going to be inhibited okay so for the overdose we give the physiocytic mean which uh, crosses the blood brain barrier and acetylcholine in the synaptic increase the uh, acetylcholine in the synaptic why we use them because the other drug they are quaternary main so so they uh, you can say reverse the action of atropine in the periphery but in the cns there is subtle problem so physiocytic main is preferably the choice, uh, drug of choice for the overdose of atropine because they reverse the uh, replace the atropine in the your uh, in the cns as well as in the peripheral okay so central as well as the peripheral so in this way they increase the acetylcholine replace the uh, antagonist so situation will improve for the glaucoma with the pilocarpine nitrate so we can use because they increase the drainage of aqueous humor and in this way they decrease the intraocular pressure so side effect convulsion and bradycardia because of muscarinic receptor side effect okay and the uh, secondary muscle parallel if it's a higher dose so crisis the coronary crisis like thing can come out down regulation for receptor and desensitization so the, these are side effect for the higher dose problem okay now come to the uh, donipazil and the rivastigmine mean. so these are actually repeat soluble which can cross blood brain barrier you know better they are also tertiary amine so clinical use is alzheimer disease what is problem there are lot of the uh, pharma, uh, pharmacology or pathological problem so one of the issue is they have low level of acetylcholine so by giving these drugs they increase the acetylcholine level in the uh, crossing uh, the blood brain barrier increasing the and the acetylcholine level in the your CNS so improve the Alzheimer condition and Parkinson dementia we pre, uh, use the rivastigmine with not the donipazil okay so the similar mechanism cross the blood brain barrier and increase the acetylcholine level side effect of course the muscarinic uh, receptor related side effect but the AV plug sometimes rarely not um, but it can be happen because of M2 receptor which causes bradycardia so they can if it's worsen so they can AV plug so now look at the organophosphate poisoning which is which is due to the exposure to the insecticides and the your nerve gas agents okay so serine tabian or semen so you can see uh, this is the clinical picture so a farmer come to your uh, the hospital he have this problem because the insecticides and the, your uh, the nerve gas which is uh, commonly used uh, in the military purpose actually if you uh, the irreversible actually if you look at the history irreversible uh, the uh, acetylcholine esterase inhibitor was discussed in the world war second before that there is no study of that where the military has used this nerve gas agent so which has caused uh, the the poisoning organ of uh, now it's a problem in by the insecticide so uh, so this was first time in the world war two so what are the going to problem of course the your cholinergic uh, cholinergic problem side, side effect through dumbbells so if if uh, chronic exposure so uh, the organ is extremely reactive and they are lipid soluble so they cross the blood brain barrier and bind with the myelin so what will happen they they stimulate the immune response against the myelin as they against the myelin they come but demyelination when this demyelination what will muscle weakness sensory losses so patient is going to death so there is no reverse, uh, reversal if it's a chronic exposure okay so most uh, most common uh, uh, you can say cause of the one went poisoning is the these organ of fast poisoning you can see 3 million per year uh, poisoning while 200000 people going to death okay so if your patient come uh, a farmer come and having the these side effect dumbbells 
so which are the diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bronchoconstriction, bradycardia, MASS, excitation, lacrimation, sandwich. If they have this uh, this problem, mean you are first thing you have to think of the organophosphate poisoning. So how you can treat it? Treatment is only acute toxicity, and uh, because in the chronic toxicity, what will, what will happen? Demyelination. You cannot treat the demyelination because if you able to treat, you can treat the sclerosis. So it's not uh, not a case. So that's the treatment is try it. Number one is atropine. So first thing, if you don't give, it's a crime. First thing for the organophosphate poisoning patient, you have to give the atropine, IV bolus urgently and continue to this drug for the several days because they uh, this is antidote for the muscarinic receptor. Okay, so they antagonize the muscarinic receptor. And the other, <coughs> which is selective for the organophosphate poisoning, that is the paralydoxium. Uh, which you call a 2 p uh, pom so they are available as a ready to use auto injector so they directly you can give into the your muscle so these are auto injector they are available so they are very specific for this they must be given within few hours so if you have given atropine now give them in the first few hours it's important otherwise the uh, if the situation go aging so then you cannot do anything we'll love to uh, discuss aging what is problem in there so bind with, what they do they bind with the organophosphate poisoning drug and break bond between the drug and the and the esterase, acetylcholine esterase. So in this way they cause the regeneration of phosphorylated acetylcholine esterase. So and the other drug which is a daisy pump for the for the conversion pur purpose. So we have used three drugs atropine, paralidoxime and daisy pump. Paralidoxime should be used in the first few hours otherwise the condition person patient is going to death. Let's see how this mechanism is. Here is two pump must be given in, in a few hours before covalent bond become irreversible. Let's see. If this become irreversible, you are going to paralyze the diaphragm, which will inhibit the breathing and patient is going to die. Here is your organophosphate uh, drug. Okay. They bind with the acetylcholine esterase like that. So initially it's a reversible blockage. But after some time, the hydrolysis happen. So this uh, R group removed. So this is irreversible blockage. So this is aging. So if you look at the time after three or fifty percent aging happen, after the twelve or ninety-five percent aging would happen. So if it's a person, of course the paralysis diaphragm, inhibition of breathing, and patient is going to death. So if but if you have given in within few hours, what will happen? Your two palm or paralidoxim do what? They actually bind with the organophosphate drug. So like that. And you are and they regenerate the acetylcholine esterase, so patient will survive. Okay, so this is very important. Now, last drug which is uh, equithiopate, so it is used in glaucoma, rarely used. Similar mechanism decrease in intraocular pressure, but if uh, it's a poisoning condition, so you can treat similar mechanism as you uh, treat the nerve gases or insecticides. So, in the summary, the condition and drug. If it's a post-operative urinary retention, you give the pathenocholate or yeah. For the glaucoma, four drugs, pelocarpine, carbacol, physiostatic, ecothiopate, whatever you want to use. Okay, xerocytemia, pelocarpine, and the semivalent. Tensilin test, hydrophonia. Mycin is grave, predeocytigmine, as well as the neocytigmine, but preferably pre uh, predeocytigmine. For the reversal of non polarizing neuromuscular blockage after the surgery, we use the neocytigmine. Okay, atropine poisoning, physiostatigmine. Because they reverse in the CNS and in the central as well as the peripheral. Deep mention Alzheimer, we use the uh, donipezal or the revisitigmine. Revisitigmine are associated with the dementia, especially. Okay. So, thank you very much. That's it regarding the agonist. Of